Okay, so we looked at a 45-45-90 right triangle just a second ago, but uh, that's easy money. The sides are the same. So here's your 45-45-90 right triangle. Well, what if you've got one that looks like this? What is this? This isn't a 45-45-90 anymore. It's a 30-60-90 right triangle. 30 degree angle here. 60 degree angle here. And 90 degree angle here. So... So now what? How, how are things different? Well, they're just a little bit different. They're not a lot different, okay? And uh, let's talk about this. Let's, let's take uh, the short leg here of the 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Let's call this guy right here. We'll call him 1. The short leg, he's across from the 30. We'll call that guy 1. And the cool relationship about a 30, 60, 90 right triangle is that the hypotenuse um, becomes 2. Now, trust me on this. We'll talk about it and prove it later in class. So if I know that I have 1 squared plus, let's just call this guy x, plus x squared, that equals 2 squared. So 1 plus x squared equals 4. So x squared equals three so what does x equal you guessed it the square root of three so here is the numbers that make my sides and hypotenuse for a 30 60 90 right triangle and uh, these are always done they'll, they'll never change and you're going to see these guys a bunch but let's talk about the sign of 60 degrees real quick the sign so here we are we're at 60 degrees right here here's 60 there he is hi 60 and what we want to do is figure out the sign well, remember the sign so we're going to talk about so ka, that's an, that's an H I need to be very clear on this this is an H Toa. Okay, so the sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite in this case is the square root of 3. The hypotenuse is 2. There's your sine of 60. Well, what's the cosine of 60? Again, staying with the 60. Staying with 60 degrees there, now we're looking at the adjacent over the hypotenuse. It's one half. And the tangent of 60 degrees is the opposite over the adjacent, square root of 3 over 1, which we'll just leave as the square root of 3. So there's the sine, cosine, and tangent for 60, but check it out. It's a little bit different than the sine, cosine, and tangent of 30 now. So, so now if I'm going to look at the sine of 30 the cosine of 30 and the tangent of 30, what am I doing? Well, I'm no longer working with 60. Sorry, 60. Working with 30 now. Working with 30. And everything changes because now the opposite side, now the opposite side is a 1. So for the sine, it's opposite over hypotenuse. That's the sine. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the tangent now is 1 over square root of 3 now. Some teachers don't like that. So we would just need to make it prettier. And we would say that it's going to be the square root of 3 over 3. Some teachers are fine with radicals in the denominator. Some aren't. You need to be able to solve it both ways. So here's the sine, cosine, and tangent of 60 and the sine, cosine, and tangent of 30. And since we know sine, cosine, and tangent, can you fill in what the, the cosecant, secant, and cotangent of 60 would be? What is that going to equal? And what about the secant, cosecant, and cotangent of 30? What would that be? Can you figure that those guys out?
Okay, so now that we've seen how to do a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, what we'll do is we'll just take some some triangle of some shape and size, and this is going to look like a 30, 60, 90, but we'll pretend it isn't. And uh, we'll call this side right here X. And uh, here's our theta right there. And we'll call the hypotenuse 6, and we'll call this side 5. So... The, the question then uh, becomes um, if the sine of theta, you know, what is the sine of theta? And if theta is here, you know, we need the opposite and the hypotenuse. So the sine of theta is 5 sixths. Well, what's the cosine of theta? So the, the cosine of theta, we don't know because now we're looking at the adjacent side right here and it's a variable so what we can do is set up our Pythagorean theorem and you're gonna have 25 plus x squared equals 36 and so x squared is 11 so x here is the square root of 11. So what is the cosine? Now I can answer all the trig functions. Cosine is going to be the square root of 11 over 6 and the tangent of theta will be the opposite over the adjacent. And again, this is a good answer, but not every math teacher likes it. So the other way it'll look will look like this. And, and then we can also find secant, cosecant, and cotangent of that theta. So the secant of theta is the reciprocal of the cosine, which is 6 over the square root of 11. And again, some teachers don't like it this way. The, co the uh, cosecant of theta is going to be the reciprocal of the sine. And the cotangent of theta put him on the top is the reciprocal of the tangent which is square root of 11 over 5 and that's how you would use just a little bit of information to solve out your entire right triangle all right so today we're going to going to solve a right triangle and anytime you're asked to solve a right triangle you're asked to to fill in all the missing sides and missing angles so you've, you've kind of got two things that are going on here. Okay, You're discovering all the missing angles and finding all the side lengths. And to do that, we're going to use the trig that we've been practicing so far, which is our Sokotoa tricks. And to, to get those guys to work, we just need to figure out what angles we have and what we know and set our relationships. Well, don't forget this guy's a 90 degree angle. And inside a triangle, if you add angle A plus angle B plus angle C, you should add up to 180. And angle A I know is going to be 37. Angle B I know will be 90. That just leaves me angle C to get to 180. So it's not a, a huge, horrible stretch of imagination to figure out that C has to be 53 degrees. Okay, Just move over 90, move over 37. So here's 53 degrees. Now, the other thing that we want to do is determine our missing side lengths. So let's let 37 be our theta. So we, we are missing the adjacent side and the opposite side. So if I say the tangent of 37 degrees is opposite over adjacent, I can't do anything with that right now. I don't know A or B. But I do know that I can do the sine of 37 degrees because that is the opposite over the hypotenuse and I know I can do the cosine of 37 degrees because that is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse and make sure that your calculator is in degree mode when you have degree angles and just solve these guys out like you would solve out a regular uh, math problem multiply both sides here by 8 Multiply both sides by 8 and 
so I have 8 sine 37 degrees is equal to A, and 8 cosine of 37 degrees is equal to B. And look, we don't need the tangent. The tangent for this problem is not needed. There's, we can't use it anyway. And then just punch into your calculator, 8 sine 37. Make sure you are in degree mode. And A should be about 4.81. And punch 8 cosine 37 into your calculator. You need to be in degree mode. And B should be somewhere around 6.39. And there are all the sides of your right triangle. That's all there is to it. Don't let this be hard.